Have you ever felt you're stuck, unable to move forward in business or in life? Nothing changes and you don't know why? And the pattern keeps on repeating itself. Well, chances are you could have a fixed mindset and the one keeping you there, well, it's you. This is why today I'm sharing with you this amazing book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. Hello readers, welcome back. I'm Charlie, I'm the book review guy and I have been in the food service and hospitality business for a little over 26 years now. And I'm here to share a bit of what I know in order to help you in any way I can. Please invest a few minutes in yourself and hear me out. This might just be what you have been waiting for to make that change. So stay tuned and buckle up while we explore mindset. Welcome. Welcome back. Before going into the golden nuggets, here are what for me are three of the strongest ideas I got from this book. The first one, the central idea of this book revolves around the concept of mindset itself. The belief that our abilities and our qualities are either fixed or can be developed. Understanding that our mindset influences our behaviors, learning and success, where one believes in the potential for improvement through effort and learning, and why this can lead to resilience, increased motivation, and ultimately, greater achievement. The second is the importance of embracing challenges and seeing them as opportunities for growth. In a growth mindset, setbacks and failures are not viewed as indicators of innate abilities, but as stepping stones towards improvement. This mindset shift encourages us to persist in the face of difficulties, fostering a love for learning and willingness to take on new challenges. The third is cultivating a growth mindset in others through highlighting the impact of mindset on relationships, leadership, parenting, and teaching, just to name a few. The author discusses how our beliefs about ourselves and others can profoundly influence our interactions. Encouraging a growth mindset in others through constructive feedback, praising efforts, and fostering a culture that values learning and development, and that can create a positive environment leading you to personal and collective success. More to come. So let's get started sharing this book's golden nuggets. Carol Dweck introduces us to the concept of mindset, both fixed and growth. In a fixed mindset, individuals believe their abilities are static, innate and unchangeable, while the growth mindset thrives on the belief that abilities can be developed through dedication, hard work and effort. Understanding these two mindsets gives us a deeper understanding of how our mindset impacts every aspect of our lives by exploring how they influence our attitudes towards success and failure, effort and learning. Unpacking these nuances helps us identify how our mindset recognizes its impact on our daily choices. There is a relationship between mindset and achievement. In this book, the author challenges the common belief that talent alone leads to success. She presents a compelling evidence that effort, learning, and resilience play equally significant roles. It discusses how adopting a growth mindset can lead to a more fulfilling and successful life. Delving into the psychology behind bouncing back stronger after failures, which is an invaluable life lesson for anyone navigating the ups and downs of life. Taking a closer look at the world of sports, Dweck examines how mindset influences athletes' performance. Uncovering stories of legendary athletes who embody the growth mindset, showcasing the power of perseverance, dedication, and the belief in continuous improvement. Additionally, the author also applies these principles of mindset to the business world, exploring leadership styles and organizational culture. Discovering how leaders with a growth mindset foster innovation, collaboration, and resilience within their own teams. Easier said than done, right? Moving into the realm of relationships, 
Dweck explores how mindsets impact our interactions with others. From a romantic relationship to friendships, whether you are a parent, a doctor, a leader, you'll find practical strategies to encourage a growth mindset in those around you. Uncovering how a growth mindset can enhance communication, resolve conflicts, and strengthen connections. It is interesting to understand how parents, teachers, mentors, coaches, bosses, you name it, can influence you with their own mindsets. It is important for you to learn how the language and feedback used, as well as our own attitudes towards effort and achievement, can profoundly influence the mindset of those under your guidance. Dweck provides insights into how you can change the mindsets of those around you, sharing strategies for cultivating a growth mindset in ourselves and others, emphasizing the importance of acknowledging and embracing the challenges that come with change. It's not always easy. Carol talks about one concept that grounded me profoundly, which is understanding that you can have a false growth mindset. Picture that, providing you a roadmap to understand exactly where you stand currently, just when you thought you were moving forward, right? Wrapping it up, remember that the power to transform your life lies in your beliefs about your abilities. Whether you're aiming for personal growth, professional success, or both, Adopting a growth mindset can be a game changer. So read this book. <laughs> More to come. Welcome back. I love this section where we get to share some real life examples of things that have happened to me in the past and that I can share with you. My first example is about a fixed mindset regarding my own family behavior. I have so many examples for this one growing up in my early years with my parents. See, growing up in a Mexican household, you pretty much have to follow the rules, the status quo. Some of you might relate to this. Our traditions are rooted in the family DNA, and if you go against them, you're outcasted. Growing up challenging these behaviors and ideas was very difficult. I always consider myself a bit of a rebel in that end. Therefore, my relationship with my parents, in the mindset topic specifically, was always a tense subject. I was a bit of an anarchist, so I always challenged those ideas and wanted to write my own personal story. I was always learning new things, learned how to code basic when I was 10, wrote stories and poems when I was 12, learned all about ham radio and created my own base, and spoke with truckers in Canada all the way from Mexico when I was 13. I found out my great-grandfather found Admiral Byrd in Antarctica with his radio base in Mexico and then alerted the authorities on the American embassy telling them where he was at. But that's another story. I also tried to learn Morse code, invented a wireless phone in the middle school and pretty much crushed all of my science fairs. To achieve all of this, I was studying all the time. Mind you, there was no internet at the time. This brought constant tension among my inner family circle and I guess that if you want a broader mindset, as I did, you will have to be okay with that. This will also mean challenging yourself constantly and what you come to understand as normal within your life. Like when I finished law school and went into culinary school to become a pastry chef. But don't be afraid. I must say every time I have stepped out of my comfort zone, to try something different, things normally play it out. There's a bit of chaos in the short term, but eventually everything starts aligning again and you find your balance. It doesn't always arrive right away, but it does eventually. Remember, to grow, you have to break your shell and it will be hard. It was hard for me too, and it continues to be hard, but you will outgrow this, believe me. And remember, it is okay to make mistakes, don't worry, I am not a radio enthusiast anymore, but I learned something from that experience. The second example is from my work a couple of years ago. The opposite of a fixed mindset is a growth mindset, right? According to what we have heard. And you might be the one who is trying to pull your team towards that mindset. A couple of years ago, 
it happened to me that I was working with an amazing group of human beings, all of whom had great traits. I wanted all of us to improve our communications, but it was very hard because all of us had the same way of doing things. And this led to frustration. I think this is mainly due to our previous experiences, either at home or at work. In addition, perhaps to our emotional intelligence. What I did was first, I introduced them to the book of Radical Candor, which we just read just before Mindset, if you remember. Hearing how Kim Scott had improved her team's communication at Google and other places opened everybody's mind, same as mine, because the concept was new to all of us. The concept of Radical Candor on its own is letting go of egos and preconceived ideas of how people communicated before. It is about embracing conflict willingly, but being upfront about all topics and not holding back until all issues are solved isn't easy, right? However, after the team read the book and we had five or six sessions to go over this book's main ideas and applying them to our situation, everyone opened themselves to the new way of communicating and things started to flow much better. Embracing the growth mindset is not easy and recognizing that you are on the fixed isn't easy either. Yes, there is part of you that will feel like you are being vulnerable. The third example is just about life. Many of us want to have a growth mindset. I just know it, but it is always more secure to be on the fixed mindset part. A follow the herd mindset sort of speaking. And believe me, I mean that in a good way. It is not easy wanting to learn something new, dedicating your path, or shifting the direction sometimes your bosses or your parents dictate for you is not easy. My advice is that you start with the little things and make your way towards the bigger things. Start with small modifications to your daily routine, like incorporating a 15-minute journal writing and meditating on your day or watching a video on a subject that you have been holding back but haven't had the time. Just make that time. It could be either at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day. One thing you can also do that I regularly do myself is lay down on a piece of paper your daily and weekly routine and analyze what is adding value to your life and what is not. Are you spending too much time playing video games or perhaps watching endless sitcoms or just lying down on the couch looking at the ceiling? Perhaps you can take some of that time and start learning a new trait, something that makes you better at your job, better at your hobby, better at your relationships, a better relationship with your parents or your boss. This is how you start believing in that the growth mindset adds value to your life. Sometimes, unconsciously, we put traps on ourselves because it makes us feel safe but it can also eliminate our possibility for growth. Those are also behaviors that can put your brain in off. Not everyone is self-motivated, but it is not impossible. This is why starting with the little things and convincing yourself that they can bring positive results later on in life and can then help you move along to bigger goals is worth doing. What do you think about this? Can you also find a body to help you be accountable of your actions? That also works sometimes. This is why, for example, book clubs work well. There is a goal, the book, and a deadline, which is the date that you have to show up for that meeting. And you're gonna be held accountable by your peers. Well, perhaps. <laughs> Interesting, right? If you like my story, please like and subscribe. More to come. So my final thoughts and scores are, I consider this book to be an eye opener to realize where we are currently. If we're okay being here or are we not? What are we gonna do about it? If we wanna do something about it? And if we want to course correct, setting a goal and a deadline. There is a before and an after to this book. You won't regret it. Just for that alone, I'll give this book five light bulbs. More to come. So let's talk a little bit about the author. Meet Carol Les Dweck. She was born in New York in October 17, 1946. She's a renowned psychologist and professor of psychology from Stanford University. Recognized for her groundbreaking research on motivation, personality, and development psychology, 
Dweck is best known for her influential work on the mindset theory. With a career spanning for decades, she has authored numerous articles and this book specifically. Dweck's dedication to understanding the psychology of success and resilience has earned her accolades and made her a prominent figure in the realm of psychology and self-development. She graduated from Bernard College in 67 and earned her PhD from Yale in 72. She has many awards, but the one that stood out for me was her recognition in 2017 from the Hong Kong-based Jidan Prize Foundation, naming her one of the two inaugural laureates for her education research citing her mindset work. She got approximately $3.9 million, divided equally between cash and the project funding. She has published many books, among them Motivation and Self-Regulation Across the Lifespan, Selfless Theories, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, Handbook of Competence and Motivation, Mindset, How You Can Fulfill Your Potential, More to Come. Welcome back. Thank you, Carol Dweck, for this enlightening book. For those who read it, your future is in your hands, and my I'd say, in your minds. <laughs> Don't forget to find this book in my bookshop.org link down below, or in your neighborhood bookstore. Our next book will be Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. This is an amazing book and will make sense with all of the other books that we have read so far. Until then, thank you, my dear readers. Please let me know in the comment section below if you have any suggestions or questions. Also, thank you for all of your support emails. I have read them all. I really appreciate them. Please like and subscribe if you're so kind. It helps us continue this project. And until next time, be kind to each other. There's not enough kindness in this world. Until next time, thank you very much.